open your Bible, I want to share with you a very small message, but it's going to help you. I can't speak something else, but I will speak from the Bible. Can we just read Revelation 3 verse 1? Revelation 3 from verse 1. The angel, divine messenger of the church in Sardis, write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name, reputation, that you are alive, but in reality you are dead. Wake up and strengthen and, and reaffirm what remains of your faithful commitment to me which is about to die for I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or meeting his requirements so remember and take to heart the lesson you have received and heard keep and obey them and repent change your sinful way of thinking and demonstrate your repentance with new behavior that proves a conscious decision to turn away from sin. So then, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at which hour I will come to you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to Read again verse 4. It says, But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes, that is, contaminated their character and personal integrity with sin. And they will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. Can you see that? Today, I want to speak with you about setting yourself aside. Tell you about set yourself aside for God. It's just to sanctify yourself. To allow God to do something for, with you. If you can read here, you can see that the church of Sardis represents a church today. There were many that were acting like God is alive in them. If you can read, you will see when God says, I know your deeds, and you have reputation that you are alive but you are dead. I was learning that many of us the reputation we are showing for people it's not what we are showing to God. Not long I was telling, uh, you know, uh, my son-in-law. I said, I said, the Bible said in the last day, you will be surprised when you will be shown devil. And, and uh, God will say, this is devil. You will be saying, ah, is this the one who has robbed the whole world? So here you could see that our appearance and Mom, activities seem to show that we are alive. Whereas we are supposed to set ourselves aside so that he bring the real life. Here the Bible says when the angel in Sardis when we were sent it, the message was, 
Though there are many who have moved out of the way. But there are few who didn't allow to be contaminated. Contamination is there to defile you. Can you tell you about contamination? It's defiling yourself. Always you find the remnant who are saying they don't want to be part of the wrong things they set themselves aside so there's a promise that was given so the angel said God is saying that those who set themselves aside he will walk with them in white. In other words, there is a promise. After you set yourself aside. He who knows the promise. When challenges come. Defiling, you will make sure that he has his own strength. When everybody is defiled. You take your stand with God and say, when I don't want to be part of that. In Matthew 15, if you read from verse 1 to 14, I want to explain to you, just write it down. The Bible says the Pharisees were questioning Jesus about the disciples. Why the disciples are defiling themselves, they eat without washing hands. And Jesus explain, explained to them that you, you, people, you are blind guys. You people, you don't understand how God works. If you can see there, when they he spoke that you people, the way you are doing, you don't know that you are the one who is depriving the word of God. When you don't set yourself aside, you deprive the word of God of its So the word of God does not produce or create what it is supposed to do. In other words, we can still speak the word of God, but that word is not effective. So Jesus said, he said there's authority and the effectiveness that the word of God shows. But if now we don't understand how it works it works by setting ourselves aside not defiling ourselves so Jesus said it's not what we eat that defiles it's the character from our hearts many of us we are defiled by the character we are showing Sometimes we just become having evil thoughts Suspicions I mean hatred and all other things And these things are there to defile us Even the word of God in us does not produce its nature I want to tell you that the word of God when it enters you It is its nature to change you Everything around us. But Jesus was saying, You people, by defiling yourself, you have deprived the word of God. And the word of God is no longer the word of God. For you. you know, when I read this, I was concerned. Because if we read the word of God and without changing, it might be there is something wrong with our hearts. This is the time that we don't defile ourselves. We set ourselves aside. 
yourself. Set yourself aside. And that's how God will work. When they carry on complaining. Because you know the disciples were complaining. Were telling Jesus. They say. What you have said. Has offended the Pharisees. And Jesus says. Whatever is not planted by my father God. Will be torn from, from the root. And uprooted. In other words. If truly is not God. With you. Very soon you won't last. Listen to this. To set yourself aside. Is to allow God to make it to last. When others cannot last. When God gives you assignments. You were supposed to be finished somewhere. But God will make you to last. To move forward where others cannot move. So the Pharisees. Were, were told that. You see you people you are not planted by God. And very soon you will approach you. Can you think about when you are so busy with nothing and you find that God has already replaced you. When Jesus came, the problem of the Pharisees was Jesus with what he was doing. Because Jesus was producing works. Producing Why? Because he set himself aside. When the Spirit of God came like a dove, he was tempted, but he could not allow any contamination. When Satan says, eat the bread, he says, hey, I can not eat the bread that is coming from your mouth. I have no power, but I can't change the stone. I don't know if you're hearing me. Jesus could not defile himself. And that is why he did what others could not do. I want to tell you that when you set yourself you set yourself aside for a purpose of God. There's a purpose of God upon your life. It will be fruitful if you set yourself aside. And if not, you will fail on the road. God does not want you to be like others. Set yourself aside from them. Others can do, but you can others can lie but you cannot when you cannot do that you look like a simple child you are like a sluggish but before God he chooses those who are wise you become example what God is raising tell somebody to say hey it's better I become stupid before you. But I stand with God. Many of us, we are proving our lives. Whereas before God, we are not existing. If you read there, you find that defiling yourself is because you, we are defending ourselves. We are trying to bring a definition that will make other people to understand us. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you want to see that, read Daniel 1. If you read verse 8, the Bible says, Daniel, Daniel made up unto his mind. Let me read it. Daniel made up his mind that he won't defile himself by the food of a king. He made up his mind. The choice is in your mind. The choice is in you. You made up your mind. You take your own decision. Daniel made up his mind. And say, I can see all these delicacies. I can see when people are showing off. But I'm not part of them. I can rather 
rather hold on it's better I suffer with the people of God than to enjoy sin for a little time many times we don't reach a level like Daniel we see any offer as an opportunity and this deprive us what we are supposed to be before God if you can read there let's read verse 8 go and read verse 8 can you read aloud in your bible mm -hmm. but Daniel made up his mind uh -huh. that he will not defile taint dishonor himself with the king's finest food or with the wine which the king drank so he asked the commander of the officials that he might be excused so that he will not defile himself. Listen to this. Defiling yourself is a choice. If we read Mark 7, Mark 7. just read Mark 7 verse from 20 to 21. Defiling yourself is to dishonor yourself. In other words, it's just to dehumanizing yourself. You are presented to be the way you are. And the way you are, you are supposed to be sustained by the one who created you to be. The way you are. Can you just, can you just read verse 20? 20. Is and he said, whatever comes from the heart of a man, uh -huh. that is what defiles and dishonors him. Mm. For from within, that is out the heart of men, comes base and mal malevolent thoughts and schemes, acts of sexual immorality, theft, murders, adulterers, Carry on. acts of greed and covetousness, wickedness, deceit, unrestrained conduct, envy and jealousy, slander and profane, profanity, arrogance and self-righteousness and foolishness, poor judgment. All these evil things, schemes and des desires comes from within and defile and dishonor the man. From today, don't judge anyone. You must take this finger you point unto your heart. This is the time now to take your own finger of pointing someone and point your heart. The Bible says Bible for you to be dishonored defiling yourself setting yourself aside is the thing that is coming here. Look here. Nobody can reach you and stop you. You get access from your heart. The door is on your hand. I don't know if you're hearing me. Stop talking about others now. You begin to remove greed, all evil thoughts, and all those things out of your heart. If you do that, God, as he sees that you set yourself aside, he will appoint you for a certain portion. Listen, what God gives you, no man can take it away from you. Tell you about what God gives you. No man can take it away from you. The problem is your heart. When the Bible talks about jealousy, not coming from friends, they are coming from your heart. Stop dehumanizing yourself. What you are created of is what God wants you to be. This year when I'm speaking with you, God will never allow you to fail. You need to remove some things from your heart. So that the word of God, when you quote it, it will produce the fruits that are needed. The challenge is in your heart. Many times we are accusing some people there. Whereas the greed is in our heart. I don't know if you are hearing me. 
I found something. Nobody can stop anyone. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell, me, tell your neighbor, you can't stop me. Can you tell your neighbor, you can't stop me? Listen, if the word of God is in you, even when someone is in front of you, the word of God in your heart says you are the head. I don't know if you are hearing me. Somebody is standing in front of you. But the word of God inside you. Say this one in front of you. Is not the head. You might be standing here but you are the head. Many times we look at where we are standing. And we begin to define ourselves more. But the situation we are facing. We complain and grumble. We end up sinning. And wrong people dominate this us. This is the time that in your heart you remove wrong things. You remove competition. You remove wrong people. You remove those who are fighting you. And you put the word of God. You sanctify yourself or set yourself aside by the word of God. The word of God will become effective. Will take you from the last position and bring you on top. I see someone here today. I know you are oppressed. Stop defiling yourself. Just set yourself aside. Because if you join them, you will be like them. Whatever happened to them, it will happen to you. Let me show you the book of Leviticus. You will hear what God spoke concerning joining these people. In Leviticus 18:24, 18 18 it says, if you defile yourself, you won't defeat your enemies. Can you just read there, Mama? Do not defile yourselves by any of these things. Yes. For by all these, the nations which I am casting out before you have become defiled. For the land has become defiled. Therefore, I have brought its punishment upon it. And the land vomits out its inhabitants. Can you hear that? Here God was telling them. He said, you people... You don't be, don't be like them. Don't do what they are doing. Otherwise, you won't take this land. Many of us, we enter the place. When we are out, we feel disappointed. Many of us, we fail to be sustained where we have entered. Many of us, we stand with the promise you have been given. But we don't reach the destiny that God has spoken. When we defile ourselves, we will be like those those ones who have been removed. Even us will be removed. I don't know if you are hearing me. There is someone here. You want to set yourself aside. Can I tell you this? It's a way of overcome your enemy. If you want to overcome. When you are hearing the enemy shouting. Listen to the enemy like Gideon. Listen to the enemy like Gideon. The enemy in secret speaks best things about you. But in public, the enemy speaks better about you. So, the enemy can speak two things same time. So what you need to do is not to concentrate on what the enemy is saying. Set yourself aside. When you do that, the one who sees you through will open a day for you. Will open a day for you. Will open a day for you. On that day, doors will be open. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Can you tell your neighbor, say, hey, there's a day 
that God has opened today. In that day, it will never pass. If you set yourself aside, there will be a testimony. I said there will be a testimony. I don't care what you are facing. Sometimes there are some delays. Sometimes there are some mountains. When you look around, you find your friends are going forward. I'm here to tell you don't look at them set yourself aside when you are sad begin to mirror yourself by the word of God when you are doing that God will begin to speak with you the first word will be hey don't look at them look unto me because I will take you where you want to go Christians who are listening to me, your friends are moving forward. But I'm here to tell you, you are about to overtake them. I say you are about to overtake them. They will never know how what happened to you. They will never know when they see the manifestation of what you are supposed to be. They will be surprised of you. What is important is to set yourself aside. Let me tell you what God did. God works by sign. By the time when the Israelites were supposed to move out from Egypt, He said, Hey, this night, set yourself aside, do what they cannot do, kill the lamb, take the blood and put it on the doorpost. And the angel of death, when he comes, he will jump you. It will be Passover. This Passover is not working. Sometimes you find that you have done what other cannot do. When the spirit of God comes, there's, there's Passover. You find the blessing is coming to you but the curse is on your neighbor. This is the time that your neighbor will experience a curse when you are giving a testimony. There is a Passover because you have done what, what your neighbor could not do. I, I don't know if you are hearing me. I can see something some people here because you are setting yourself aside for this year for God, God to appoint you for this season I am here to tell you that God is about to bring a Passover you know what will happen the blessing will pass your brothers but it will come to you it will pass your neighbors but it will come to you I see Passover. After this service, I see Passover. I see Passover. I see Passover. I'm beginning to feel Passover. The enemy is about to cry. When the miracle is coming to your door, I see that miracle now. You cannot set yourself aside and you die empty. God wants to use you as an example. Thank God about the delay and the problem you have been facing. I don't mind about what you have been facing. But there's a Passover that is coming. Something is about to come to you. I see Passover promotion in the name of Jesus. Say, I hear Passover. I say, I hear Passover. Listen. Lalela. When God wants to do something, he must do it in public. But look here. It's God who sees in the secret. We need to do something in the secret. In the secret, in the secret, in the secret we set ourselves aside. If we want God to do something, let's set ourselves aside. In that fasting, aside. In that prayer, aside. And God who sees. God who sees. 
is about to see today I prophesy someone who suffered as he, as he see a Passover of a cow that car is jumping as he is jumping but it's coming to someone if you believe shout hallelujah listen you must know this to set yourself aside it you have got some principles you need to follow it creates number one a desire there is something that God will give you first he will give you a desire and in that desire it will make you to seek God in a special way because the Bible says when you desire you will be given if you delight so now the desire will bring the delight and that delight in obedience you do things excited. You are so excited when you obey. When other people are struggling in obeying God, you are excited. So God gives you a desire to do what you want to do. So that when you do it, you do it to the top. I remember the one, son, one child called Jacob. This Jacob, when you look at his brother, he had a desire that the firstborn have got a birthright. But always the firstborn was playing with what he has been given. He didn't mind about what he has been given. Passover came. Jacob began to seek what was supposed to be of him. And he created in a way that he have to get it. And his mother helped him. I'm here to help you. I say I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you to get what your friend was supposed to be receiving. I don't know if you are hearing me. I say I'm here to help you to get that assignment. To get that blessing. To get that breakthrough. Listen. Listen. When this kind of Esau ran to the bush, the mother said, Hey, Jacob, don't go far. Don't go far. Stay in the house. When he moved out that way, don't go far. Stay in the house. When you are in the house here, when he's running there, let's kill what is around to get a blessing. What your father needs is an offering to release the blessing. You don't go far. Tell him, don't go far. Don't go far from God. Don't go far. Stay so close. You are about to see one. Okay, let's leave there. Let me give you scriptures. Let me give you scriptures. In John 17 verse 17, John 17, 17 Jesus said, I sanctify them in the truth to set them apart for my purpose or for their purpose and make them holy for his word. Can you just read and amplify? He say what? He sanctify them in truth. Yes. Set them apart for your purpose. purposes. Yes. Make them holy. Your word is the truth. Can you see here? Jesus said, here, listen, these disciples, yes, sir, I have set them apart, God, for your purpose. If you want to do something on earth, I set these people apart. apart. I taught them to be apart from others. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you want to be used by God, set yourself apart from them. And from there, God will do something and use you. Remember what the Bible says in the house, they are all tools, but they are the ones of honor. You cannot be a vessel of honor if you don't set yourself apart. There are some things that need you to be far away from them so that you will be effective in the right time. In 1 John 
3 2 to 3 2 to 3 I want us to read that verse several times First John 3 2 to 3 chapter 3 read verse 2 read it again and again mama read it say what verse 2 and 3 yes Ere. Beloved, beloved, we are even here and now children of God. Yes, we are children. And of it God. is not yet made clear what we will be after his coming. Stop there, Mama. Read it again. I want you to listen to that verse. It's important. Beloved, beloved, we are even here and now children of God. We are now children of God. And it is not yet made clear what we will be after his coming. Listen, it has not yet been clear. It's not yet visible what we will be. Read it again, Mama. Beloved, uh -huh. we are even here and now children of God. Yes. And it is not yet made clear what we will be after his coming. After his coming, because he's coming now. Very soon. When he comes here, he will come today here. And what you are supposed to be is supposed to be. I don't know if you're hearing me. Read it again, Mama. Beloved, Beloved, we are even here. We are even here. And in now Charis. children of God. Now also we are children of God. And it is not yet made clear. What we will be all along, all along, the reality of us were not yet visible. This scripture is like the one that says, The creation is crying for the manifestation of the children of God. The visibility of us is not yet known. Carry on, Redeemer. Yes. Uh, after his coming, yes. we know that when he comes and is revealed, we will, as his children, be like him because we will see him just as he is mm. in all his glory. And everyone who has the hope confidently placed in him purifies himself just as he is pure, holy, undefiled, and guiltless. Listen, the one who understands that we are supposed to be like him when he comes. That person purifies himself as his pure. He sets himself aside. Listen, you know, I, I was concerned, I, like I said, I was saying, in the last days, people will beat each other. Think about in the last day. You people, you call me apostle. And in the last day, you find I'm with you in hell. You people will beat each other. You rob me. You beat me. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Listen here. It's time now that we don't wait for the end. We know, we know when he appears, we shall be like him. And we have that hope that we shall be like him when he comes today. So, because of that, we purify ourselves. We set ourselves aside as his pure. Let's look at Joshua. Three and we close. Joshua chapter three. I think it's late. We close. Verse five. Joshua chapter three. This is your verse. This one. Joshua chapter three, verse five. You say what? Then Joshua said to the people, Yes. Sanctify yourselves for his purpose. Joshua, listen to this. God spoke with Joshua. Joshua. I'm sending you to take Canaan. So tomorrow, 
I'm going to do something that nobody has ever seen. But look what Joshua says. He said to the people, listen, God wants to do something, but he won't do it if there's no set aside. Though he said he will do it, Joshua is teaching people tomorrow is about to do something. Can you purify yourself? Can you set yourself aside? Tomorrow there will be a miracle. If you look at the Amplified Bible, it talks about tomorrow God will do a miracle. There's no miracle without set aside. I don't know if you're hearing me. Today I'm here to tell you something. If you people you purify yourself. You set yourself aside. There is no river that will take you away. All rivers will open the doors for you. There will be a highway in the sea. I don't know if you are hearing me. Listen to this. I'm seeing you crossing over. The life you were living. 2018. You will never live it this year. Self crossing over. But it won't happen unless you set yourself aside. I can see Joshua say to the people, people of God, tomorrow God wants to do wonders. I want to tell you like Joshua. You people in charis, tomorrow, this time, you'll be seeing a miracle. But listen, set yourself aside and you will see the miracle. I don't know if you are hearing that. Are you ready to set yourself aside? There's nothing in your heart that is bothering you. There's no sin in your heart. You want to set yourself aside. I see you crossing over. I see you crossing over. You are about to be a boss. I say you are about to be number one. You are about to be on top. Say I'm crossing over.